I'm going to run through the parts in the kit. The lever for the handlebar, which is here. The bracket for holding the outer cable. A shorter 15mm bolt for holding the bracket to the cylinder head. The two 20mm bolts for bolting on the CNC cover to the head. And your cable for the actuator. Plus also an O-ring, sealing ring for the actual valve cover, which we need to fit in like so that's it right let's uh, fit it onto a head and see what it does first thing we're going to do is bolt the actual tappet cover onto the head now I'm using a head on the bench it's a lot easier for you to see how to fit it uh, I'll show you it fitted on the bike later on so first thing to do is make sure you back off the adjuster just marginally um, so it doesn't foul with the rocker arm. Your valve clearances will be set already to uh, fourth hour inlet, sixth hour exhaust, which is 0 0.10 inlet and 0 0.15 exhaust. Uh, bolt the cover on first with the two 20 mil bolts. Just bolt it straight onto the exhaust. There we go. Then nip those up. They haven't got to be murdered up, they just need to be a nice nipped up feel there. Secondly, bolt the bracket onto the head. There's always this lug here already, which was originally for an oil feed, but none of the YX engines use that anymore. So the bracket's designed to run close to the head. That's offset there. That's the bolt and the washer. Bolt that on. Just need a 5mm Allen key for this to do everything up. Knit that up, there we go. Uh, our next move is we're just going to fit the cable in. It's a bit early but we'll, we'll get it on and in first. It's a little easier to do it with the head off. Just get the cable loosely on. It's got a massive amount of adjustment which we can use later if need be. So we'll just lay that on. Uh, next move is to connect the cable into the actual finger lever. Now uh, we do that first because when it's closed it's blind you can't get it in afterwards so start with the end we're just going to latch that in if I can do it, butter fingers here we go, click that in put it into the gate right and then lay that out of the way okay now for setting up it's a fairly simple operation Obviously our engine's going to be on TDC on the firing stroke, so both valves are going to have clearance at that point. So we're going to now find the point of where the actual actuator hits the end of the valve, or the tappet adjuster should I say. So we're going to wind it in, and you'll feel just at the point where it stops. So when you, f you just have to feel it a few times, back the lock nut off, but wind it in and you'll just feel it bump there we go I can just feel that bumping into it there I'm holding this the actual actuator arm directly in line pointing out with the uh, head in a, in, a, in a parallel line to the head to the fins if you like um, and then we're going to wind it in there it is it's bumping on the valve there so now we want to back it off just one flat of the nut of the bolt should I say then by holding this arm still all the time still in a straight position we're going to just nip it up with a 12mm spanner then with a 13mm spanner we're going to hold the end of this the actual arm and we're going to give it a final beef up there it is so that's the actuator set in the right position wind the arm forwards right the way round and if I'm not got butter fingers again, but try and get this in. Doesn't help with gloves on sometimes. There she goes. That's it, we're in. Now, what we need to do, we know the arm stops there because we can feel a little bit of resistance as it's hitting the end of the valve just there. We're now just going to take up that slack. And how we do that is just back that adjuster off. We know the arm's making contact just about there. So we want to give it a little bit of play, so we can adjust it up a little bit more to about there. 
So we've got a little bit of play in there and it's just got enough to operate it there. Uh, you do need two 12mm spanners just to nip these up. I'm only for the video going to nip them up like that. And that now is actuating the valve. Very light action, operated off your finger up on the handlebars. Okay, well I'm going to show you how it now works on the bike, so, oh sorry, on the engine, so you can see how the difference of it actually releasing the gases out through the exhaust valve and how easy it is to find the point of starting. Now we're all installed, um, the bracket's on, it's actuating the valve inside and if we just check the actuation of it, we can see it's a nice operation there, smooth. Um, and you can also just check, you can just feel the resistance at the end of the valve, just touching there, so we know we've got enough free play in that. Okay, let's check it. So, with it uh, in its uh, running position, i.e. the lever's not pulled in, we're gonna have oh, quite a lot of compression. Turn it around against the firing stroke. And you can see the compression we've got there. So, now, I'm going to pull the lever in, right the way up, hold it with one hand, and what do we have now? Absolutely no compression whatsoever, you can just hear it passing the exhaust valve down there, if I do that again, okay, and when I let off the lever, all of a sudden, the spanner comes off, no, <laughs> oh, there you go, we've got full compression back again. So it's perfect on the you know the really high compression like the 160 engines. We're using this on a, a 150 electric start 1360 engine. Um, it's marginally lower compression than the normal 160, um, but uh, it's negligible. It's still a job to kick over on the kick start if it's in the wrong place. But having a decomp on allows you to find compression. Uh, or whichever way you want to do it, however you want to learn how to start your engine, you can either kick it and then just let go of the lever at the point of the kick, or you can just use it to find TDC, the right point to kick. But uh, there we go. And then with it released again, one last time. There you go. So, but it will need adjusting up as the valve clearance has changed. It will just need a little tweak here and there either on the push rod or on the cable if you find it's starting not to work or it's starting to, to, to work all the time slightly where the valves obviously come through the gap will close and it will actually hold it open so but that's why we give it a fair amount of clearance so it's got room to to move as such. I made the cable rather short so it goes up and it will actually sit rather than sitting up in right on the bars near the control because you can't often fit it all in there We've made it so it will actually clamp either in the middle of the bars, so you can just reach down and put it there. Obviously, on most bikes, it's going to be over here somewhere, but um, it's not all in a way like a massive um, sort of meter of cable. Uh, well, I hope that's been some help on how to fit it. Remember, you can always call us or uh, email us if you've got any issues with fitting the kit or got a problem with it running. Uh, we have tried and tested it on for about probably six months a year now, and it. Uh, it's been really, really good. It saves a lot of hassle of, uh, of uh, starting for those people that can't kick over the high compression engines. Uh, we are also working on a four valve one, uh, which will help find on startup. So uh, keep your eyes on the side. Thanks for watching.